Hey folks, hope everybody's doing great. I am just starting. I uh, wanna make sure that the stream health is good. Say hello, let me know you're here. I'm just checking everything, looks like we're doing okay. Hey Melanie, Kimberly, Michael, Elizabeth, great to see you. Kara, are we good? Okay. Hey, everybody. It is Andy. It is 11 o'clock. It's Thursday, Central, 11 o'clock Central Time, Thursday in the U.S. And you found my YouTube channel and my live office hours, and I am giving free career and job search advice. And it, with a wonderful heart and a little bit of a sad face, this is the fifth of five programs in my mini-series for the summer. And we're going out with a bang. We're going to talk about how to prepare for a job interview. And it's really, I'm going to give you 10 great items, a really nice checklist to make sure you're ready. But before we get into that, I just want to introduce myself for the folks who are coming in who don't know me. My name's Andy LaSavita. I'm the founder of Mile Walk and the Mile Walk Academy, an award-winning author of The Hiring Prophecies and Interview Intervention. And I have for a very long time been helping people succeed in their careers. I've done that through my search for Mile Walk, which I founded in 2004. And more recently, I launched the Mile Walk Academy in 2016, which is my training site where I teach on all things career and personal development related for individuals, and I teach on hiring for organizations. Now, all of that, in, that information, my contact information, my blog, the training site, all, all the links to my social uh, sites, that, that platform are in the description. And also in the description are four or five really nice giveaways. I want to announce them now so you know that they're there. You can get them later. And I'm going to refer to them throughout the session because they have places in, this ten, in these 10 steps I'm going to talk about where you can grab. I've got a free resume webinar. It's about an hour. Talks about how to get your resume noticed. I've got free resume templates for college students and professionals. I've got a great job interviewing webinar that's one solid hour of everything you want to know about how to answer and ask questions in a job interview. That's called Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview. And I've also got a great ebook called Ace Your Job Interview. It has 14 of the most effective job interview questions. It's got variations of those questions, why the employer asks them, what the employer is looking for, and the very best responses. So this is really, th those aids should really help you as you, as you, uh, as you get, get ready for your job interviews. Now, one of the things that, you know, I, I wanna level set us today. You know, this, I mentioned about the, the checklist and the 10 steps and all that good stuff. I don't look at this as me giving you a checklist. I don't look at this as trying to get you to enroll in one of my courses. This is about, and I'm putting everything I've got into giving you the tools to change your future. That's the future that you want in the job you want or the career you want or with the organization or the business you want to run, whatever it is. And so I want you to think about as we go through all these points, how pivotal, how pivotal these points can be to changing your future. It's really, really a big deal. Your outlook, your attitude, how you see things is going to have a lot to do with your success. And I've got, I've got this. I don't think that you can see this. I don't. This is my 65 point inspection <laughs> checklist for when I would go into an interview. 60, we're not going to go through all 65 of these, but I am going to give you 10 great points. But I want you to know there's an awful lot that you need to be mindful of as you go into these interviews. So let's talk about some of these, some of these things. Number one, mm, number one, and the first thing, and by the way, these are, you don't need to do them in this order. I outlined the 10 steps in the order that I would think through, kind of going from top down and research to, to role, to personal, to so on. But you do these in whatever order you want. But number one is you got to review the corporate website. And you're, you're probably laughing, thinking, hey, hey, Andy, duh, it's the first thing I would look at. Actually, it's the first thing 95% of you look at. But, but what you look at is not the same as what you see. And if you and I look at the website, we might see different things. And 
It's very important what you see. It's very important the questions you ask yourself when you look at something because that will change what you see. So when you look at the corporate website, how are you feeling? Do you, what image does it portray? Can you clearly see the products, the services, the news related to this organization, where they are in their space? Are they a leader? How do they feel about their employees? How do, is there information for their customers and their employees? Does it look attractive? Would I want to sell that product? Would I want to market that product? Would I want to account for that product? Would I want to build or maintain that product? Whatever it might be, think about all the questions that you could ask when you look at that website. And think about, you know, 10 years ago, when you'd look at a website and I would say to my job candidates, hey, you know, you're not your resume. They really need to talk to you to figure out who you are and what you're about. And I'd say, yeah, you know, my, my clients, those, those companies that are hiring, that are, they're not really their website. But today, today there's absolutely no excuse not to have an awesome website. It's inexpensive. A lot of times you just do it in-house. You can outsource it for, for very little money to come up with something very cool. There's absolutely no excuse for any great company not to have a great website. That's like you going to a job interview not caring what you're wearing and not caring whether you comb your hair or not. So I want you to understand that that, that, is, that sends a message to you. It sends many messages, and the questions you ask are going to make the difference. So that's number one. The second thing is actually an extension of number one because I would also take a very, very good look at their career portal. You can tell an awful lot by what the career portal has. Is it just a list of jobs? Is it, you know, click here and click your location and here's the openings and so on? Or are there employee testimonials? Is there recruitment news? Is there videos and advertising around what it's like to work there? What are the benefits of working there? Why would somebody want to work there? Is there uh, demonstrations of employees who have grown within the organization or testimonials about what attracted people to the organization? There's loads of things that you should look for when you look at these career portals, but the career portals send subliminal messages to you. When you look at, one of the things you should do as you are preparing, as we're talking about, and there's many things related to the job, but when you start to look at the career portal in aggregate, not just for your job description, we'll get to that one later, but when you look at the career portal, what do you see? Do you see a lot of openings for a particular position? Is that growth? If you go into a job interview and you made a mental note, there were a hundred open sales positions and you ask the company, how big were you last year? How many people? And they say 200. And you say, well, how many people do you have this year? And they say 205. Alarm bells should be going off in your head because they've got a lot of open positions, which means there's a lot of turnover. They, they, they aren't growing at the rate that you would think that they would be at 20 or 30 percent or whatever whatever you would expect so there's an awful lot you can glean from the career portal so take a look at that and companies who care will spend a care about their employees will spend extra time in that section of the website so that's the second thing that i would look at all right number three number three is kind of it's two things at once it's the corporate social sites and the corporate review sites. So think in terms of social, social media. Does the company display, do they display events, messages, articles from key employees, any employees for that matter? Are they sharing their knowledge? Are they creating a community, whether it's of their own employees, customers, partners, uh, people that have bought or, or our, uh, bought their service or their product or whatever it might be. It's not difficult to maintain a, the social sites these days and a lot of really good companies have somebody dedicated to keeping that up. There's an awful lot you can glean from there and even if it's just more about how you feel about the organization, what messages they're sending, what they're sharing, are they philanthropic, whatever it might be. The other place you want to look as part of number three is the corporate, the corporate uh, review sites, Glassdoor, Wet Feet, Vault, there's a bunch of them. Go out there, see what the employees are saying. Take it with a 
take it with a grain of salt. One thing I want to caution you when you start reading corporate review sites is you oftentimes get a lot of unhappy employees who are more than happy to go out and write bad reviews on their former employer. But just remember, they're not you and things change at light speed these days. So a lot could have changed. There might be some grain of truth to what they're saying, but I would rather you go and investigate it for yourself and make that determination. So that's, that's number three. That's number three. Number four, number four, the job interviewers. Most of the time, most of the time, not all of the time, you will have some advance notice of who you're gonna meet with. So if you do have advance notice, then there is absolutely no excuse for you not to find out everything you can possibly find out about him, her, them, or whatever. Go out into cyberspace, Google them, look on the website, look on LinkedIn, look on any of the social sites. It, it is not stalking. This is due diligence. You are looking to better understand in advance this person. Is this person knowledgeable in a particular area? Have they written something that's been published? Are they a, a columnist, a contributor? Are they their person spoke? Are they their organization spoke person on something? Whatever it might be, because that will breed great questions from you where you can dig in a little bit more to something that's personal for them. And we'll get into, you know, I'm not gonna go into how to ask all your questions. I've got a whole webinar on that, but it really will help you and it'll spawn some questions that you, or at least data that you might wanna have in your hip pocket about that particular person, what resonates with them, what, what might they find interesting, what do they speak passionately about. So all that good stuff. You will be amazed at what's out there. Number five, the job description. I've talked, I've shot many videos on how to use the job description. The one thing that I really want you to do is I want you to really study the job description. Make sure that you know it. Make sure that you understand it generate some questions from it. Make sure you got a good feel for what you think the job entails because you're gonna get some clarifications of that during the session. But here's the, here's the other thing. When you look at that career portal and you see your job description and the one that you are interviewing for, assuming you know that that's the position that they're recruiting you for or you're interviewing for, look at all the positions related to it. So you wanna look above look at is there a more senior position is there a, a one step down a junior position and you want to know what those positions are because in the job interview you may fall short of expectations or experience in which case the next lower position might be appropriate for you or you might have more than enough qualifications to reach above you also want to see if they are interacting with other positions you know, we, we, we work with um, engineers and some of these uh, system engineers or network engineers or whatever they might be, might work with a salesperson on um, a sales pursuit. Maybe you're a technology company and you're introducing your product or your service to a potential customer. It's usually a team effort. If it indicates that you, whatever your position is, is likely to interact with other positions, then you want to look for those positions and see if they have openings and what those job duties look like. Or you might want to actually go and look at people who are holding those positions. You can use LinkedIn and go search for them. Just put the title in to LinkedIn, put the company name, and you're likely to find who those people are and look at their backgrounds and just try to get a feel. All of this insight is great homework to do. It will, it will help spawn some additional questions about the interactions. It'll get you ready in case you need to step up or step down into the positions. It's very, very common that that happens but, you know, based on the interviewer's assessment. So you wanna know in advance when they say, hey, you, know, you might actually be good for this or that or that. Then you know what they're talking about instead of trying to imagine. So that's, that's, really, that's really doing homework. So it's not just the job description. It's all the footnotes in the job description. It's all the relationships from the job description. It's thoroughly understanding the job description and it's physically bringing the job description in with you and you might wanna bring those other job descriptions in with you as well, just in case you have to glance at them. All right, number six. So now we're talking about, you know, we're talking about them. We're talking about, we're talking about all the stuff you can do. Look at the company, look at their reports, look at their websites, look at the people. What about you? Your requirements. Now, 
For those of you that are avid followers of me, you know I go into great lengths to talk about self-awareness exercises and making sure you, you know your needs, your why, your requirements, your strengths. That is what sets you up for success because knowing all of that and what drives you and your happiness also allows you to generate questions to investigate that. So have your list of requirements with you. It is amazing how quickly I could make you forget your requirements by distracting you with the walls of the office or the people going by or what I'm saying. So when you're in when you're in hand-to-hand combat, so to speak, I know these job interviews aren't hand-to-hand combat, although they might feel like that sometimes, but when you're doing that and you're and you're under duress, you forget what's important to you. Don't lose sight of it. And the other thing that you want to do is number number seven, you actually want to make sure that you bring your questions in that are in alignment with your requirements. That's the most important aspect for you personally. Now, there's, and I'm not gonna go into great detail about this, there's corporate level questions because you have to ask uh, whether or not the organization is healthy financially, if it's growing, if it's a leader, what the culture's like and all that good stuff. And you're just investigating whether or not it's a solid company. But the answer you are really trying to get when you're asking your questions isn't whether this is a good company. It's whether this is a good company for me. And your requirements allow you to assess that. So if you have your requirements, you can generate your list of questions and have them both with you so that you can walk through that when you're given an opportunity to ask your questions. So that's that's number seven. Now to help you with that, I mentioned earlier that I have a job interviewing webinar called Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview. It's a doozy. 7,000 people have been through this in the last five months. And it is really helping a lot of people on how to answer and ask their job interview questions. And in that webinar, in that uh, Three Keys to Ace Any Job Interview webinar, the attendees get a couple of great free eBooks. One of them is how to interview the employer, 75 great questions to ask before you take any job. I'm not saying you gotta ask all 75 of them, but they're organized for you, they're well thought out, they are very good questions, and you can start picking your questions from that ebook. It's fantastic. It is it is my most desi- one of my most desired ebooks. And you can only get it if you watch my three keys to ace any job interview webinar, which you can get in the description. So that's a big one. And and I want I want to make sure you're ready for that. And and you need to align those questions, those 75 questions, or however many you can think of, to your needs. Not my needs, but your needs. But I gave you a plenty to pick from. All right, we're talking about your questions. Number eight is your responses. You need to be able to answer the questions effectively that they ask. So here again, I've talked about this in the past. Some of these live office hours sessions, uh, the first uh, one was the tell me about yourself question. I think the second one or third one was why do you want to work here? And we talked at length about how to go about that. One of the things I also give away, I mentioned this earlier in the in the in the live uh, in the intro- introduction to this. I have a free ebook for anybody who joins my blog. It's called Ace Your Job Interview: Master the Best Resp- Best Answers to the 14 Most Effective Job Interview Questions. It's a fantastic magazine style ebook. It will give you the 14 what I consider to be the most effective job interview questions. There's 43 variations in there as well. Why the employer asks them, what the employer is looking for, and the very best responses. That will get you started in getting your responses ready for those types of questions. That, in my opinion, will give the employer 85% of what the employer needs to know about you. The other 15, 20% that's really critical are your particular skills And for whatever function you're interviewing for. So if you're an accountant, you better have good accounting skills. If you're a salesperson or a marketer and so on. So, but that ebook is great. And the other thing is that three keys to ace any job interview webinar teaches you how to tell your stories and respond most effectively to any job interview question. So check that out. I'm really arming you with some great free stuff here. Okay, that was number eight. Where are we at? Number nine, your resume. Sad as it is, you got to bring it in with you. It is an all too often screw up by employers. They don't read your resume. They don't bring it in with them. They're not fully versed on where you've been or what you're doing or how awesome you are. So you got to bring your resume and just bring copies with you. 
People are rushed, they show up late to interviews, they don't have what they need, they didn't look at it, or if they did, they glanced at it a week ago when the interview was set up. I don't want you to get caught not having a copy of your resume. Also, back to one of my freebies. If you have not seen it or watched it, I have a video on YouTube called How to Build the Ultimate Professional Resume, and I also have one for the college students uh, the one trick to make your college resume stand out. In this description, you can grab templates that go great with those videos. The videos are easy to find. I have even a resume tips playlist on my YouTube channel. You can check that out. I also have a free resume writing webinar. Actually, it's more about getting the resume noticed. It's called Three Secrets to Get Your Resume Noticed. It's about 50 minutes of how somebody looks at your resume, what they're looking for, the do's and don'ts, how to make it stand out, all that good stuff. So check that out. Build a powerful one. I'm sure that you are in good shape. If you're interviewing, right, they, they must have liked something that they saw. But if you want to punch it up, check that stuff out. That's all free. If you really want deep training, I have paid programs for all this stuff too. All right, number, number 10, your dress. So I get this question a lot from my candidates. What should I wear to the interview? There's nothing wrong with the question, but here's my standard answer to everyone. Unless you are otherwise instructed, you should wear full business attire. I realize that very few organizations and industries anymore require you to wear a suit and tie if you're a man or a full business dress or pantsuit or something. Uh, or a skirt uh, suit uh, if you are a lady, but unless you are otherwise instructed, that's how you should show up. If they tell you you're welcome to dress business casual, then dress business casual. But I would, I would take the business casual a step up. So if they say business casual, for me, I would probably throw a sport coat on and a button down shirt that I normally wear when I shoot these things. It's polo day today. But um, you, get, you get what I'm saying. I would always try to be just a slight tick mark above what they're asking. If you are unable to wear a suit or a business suit, if you're a woman, to a job interview that you're likely having during the middle of the day because you don't want to raise suspicion with your current employer, then what I suggest is you either figure out a way to get that tie on and that coat on or you make sure you alert the employer so that they know it will raise suspicion. Most of them, all of my clients, many, many of my clients, they're completely okay with that as long as they are notified in advance. There's no problem. If you just show up that way and start explaining, that usually isn't as good. So I just wanna make sure you do that. Sounds silly, but I get asked that all the time. So just to recap for you folks, the 10 steps that I would take, and obviously there are subsets of all of these things. But look at the corporate website. Look at the career portal. Spend some time. I'm not talking about like glancing at a job description. Really, really get in there. Number three, they're, they're the corporate social sites and the corporate review sites. Make sure you look at those. Number four, the job interviewers, if you know them. Number five, the job description and any of its cousins and relationships that it has. Number six, your requirements. Number seven, your questions. Number eight, your responses. Number nine, your resume. And number 10, your dress. Hope you liked it. Okay, let's go to the phones, so to speak. Kara, how are we doing? Everything okay? Everybody can hear me? Nothing conked out? Just looking at who's here. Michael McDevitt is on, and I would hope that everybody, which Michael's got a big interview tomorrow. Hopefully, I'm not embarrassing, buddy. You know I love you. It's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. Everybody, give him a shout out and give him good luck. It's a, it's a big interview. Kimberly's here. Love to see you always, Melanie. Kara's always with me. I can't do anything without her. Hey, Elizabeth, my accounting friend. Aline, Olga. Hey, Olga. Gloria, Suzanne, good to see you. Eleanor, Jackson, David. David's here, man. Good to see you. Victoria, you guys are great. All right, hang on. Any, any, uh, hang on. I'm just floating down here, just getting caught up with you guys. Mom is here. Carl's here. How great is that? All right. Carl, Shelly. Kay Flynn, excited to learn. Second interview coming up, Kay. Good, uh, 
I'm not sure if you're a he or she, but great. Uh, good luck to you. To here, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Great to see you. Carol, Radisa. Carol, again, how would I ask? Okay, wait, I think I'm getting into question territory. Hey, Kara, I'm going to ask Kara. I'm going to ask or answer Carol's question first. And let me know if I miss anybody. And then I'll just keep floating down. So Carol Watson. Carol Watson asked, how would you ask a question if Glassdoor does have negative reviews about a company? That's a fantastic question. Almost every organization that you guys interview with will likely have negative reviews. So this is the first thing to understand about these corporate sites. So I mentioned Glassdoor. It's very popular. It might be the most notable. Vault is a good one. Wet Feet is another good one. If you can get access to Hoover's, that's great. But I think that's a paid subscription. But so I am a huge fan of looking at that stuff. But I want to caution you. First thing is take everything you read with a grain of salt. When you go, and actually I use this, for those of you who are on, on our private coaching session last night, somebody asked this, and I use this analogy, but when you go to a restaurant and you love it, you turn to one person and you say, it was great, I loved it. Service was great, food was great. If you hated the service or you hated the food or you hated the people, whatever, you go on Yelp and you start ranting about it. So you got nine negative reviews to one positive review. That's just the way the world works. You're mad, you're upset. So for these employees or whoever they were that didn't gel well with the organization. So they're more apt to go out. So you're likely to see a heavier dosage of negative reviews, even if the company's awesome. So the first thing is just take it with a grain of salt, but look for the patterns. Are they all talking about the same senior management person or team or unit or does it look like all of those were from the year before last or are they more recent? So here again, some context around what those reviews are. Jot them down in your list of questions. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you ask the question. Yes. So Carol, the answer to your question is yes, ask it. But the way you ask it is important because that will yield a different type of response. It'll be a higher quality response if you say, you know what, Mr. Interviewer Man, as part of my due diligence, I went through all the corporate review sites. I noticed on Glassdoor there were some negative reviews in this area or you know, it seemed to be around this time. Here's what they were. Could you just shed some light on that? Do you, are you aware of this? Can you just shed some light on that? And you know, what, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're keeping them in an open posture as opposed to putting them in a defensive posture where if you said, hey, you know, I looked at your glass door reviews, they were kind of bad. Uh, so how you tee it up, I think you want to be gentle. You want to say, you know, I, I looked at it. I realize I know how these things work. I know oftentimes when somebody's unhappy. And what you need to remember is they're not you. You know, if you've got a positive outlook, if you're more congenial, if you get along with people better, you know, I don't know what the review was. But you need, to, you need to make sure that you keep it in context. And when you present your question or you ask your question to the interviewer, you're asking it in a manner where you're keeping them open. And you're saying, hey, I get it. I get it. Can you just fill me in on that? What, what was that? And then see what they say. But that's what I would do. Hope that helped. Thomas, great to see you. Shana from Audrey. Hi, Andy. How can you... How can you really learn about a company culture during the interview? Mm. So Shana, so you must be Audrey's sister, <laughs> maybe? Okay, so that's awesome. That is a fantastic question. And folks, just so you know, uh, when I mentioned I was the, um, I wrote an award-winning book. My last book was a gold award-winning business careers and sales book called The Hiring Prophecies. Psychology Behind Recruiting Successful People. The reason I bring that up is because I have built models and analyzed this stuff day in and day out for a very long time. And I drew a conclusion, uh, my conclusion based on statistics and other goodness stuff, surveys, observation, and so on. Cultural fit is the single greatest indicator of retention, employee retention and recruiting success. So it's very, very important for both sides to make sure that you are culturally aligned. 
and I want to spend a minute on what culture is because we all think about culture as you know it's the feel of the organization and the personality of the organization and do I gel with that is it welcoming is it entrepreneurial is it team oriented is it analytical is it driven is it a meritocracy all of these adjectives that go into describing the culture are what defines its culture you need to determine if those adjectives and the way in which an organization uh, behaves culturally is in alignment with you and do not be fooled into thinking that you will adapt to the culture you will not adapt this is a big misnomer. It's a huge mistake that employers make when they hire an employee, and it's a huge mistake that employees make when they take a job. They think that they will reposition their personality to fit the organization. So if you are an adaptable person and you think, oh, I'm flexible, I can go with the flow, you're fooling yourself because you will burn out over time because you will constantly have to adapt every day that's not your natural waking state so audrey's question and shana's question here is really good because you want to make sure that you can evaluate their culture so she's asking about during the interview what would she do do you remember when i kind of glossed over your requirements and i said you need to perform these self-awareness exercises up front to make sure that you know your needs your interests your strengths and so on part of your needs is in that list should be the list of cultural characteristics that you thrive with list them out so if you like a team oriented environment if you like a supportive environment if you like a fast paced a slow paced a structured an unstructured whatever it is because everybody's list is different you want to list that out and then you want to start generating your questions to determine so if you have your list of requirements and you have your cultural characteristics which are your requirements they're part of your requirements you should generate questions that that elicit information about whether the or organization is team oriented or is fast paced or rewards its employees how does it reward its employees so i would align those questions now the specific questions that go along with the traits what i would do is i would watch my three keys to ace any job interview webinar i would get the 75 questions and i would start looking at those particular questions and see what which ones align to eliciting insight about the traits that are important to you so to recap that answer list out the adjectives that you would use to describe the environment or the culture that you thrive in then identify questions that help you know whether or not they meet those how they demonstrate those um, characteristics and that's how i would do it in an interview so glad the burton the burton ladies are teaming up there okay oops sorry let me get back to shelly should a resume be written shelly caruso should a resume be be written in third person as she has no don't write it in third person and don't write it in first person you don't need to use pronouns you can actually make your sentences fragments if you want it's okay make them as complete as possible but don't use pronouns at all okay diane hey good to see you craig patrick glad you are with us buddy jackson all right let me read this one okay i'm gonna read this one out loud and buddy you jackson by the way if you are not in my resume course and workshop you are now it's free it's on me i want you to send me an email to support at milewalk.com and i will get you set up and that comes with three additional months of coaching you will love it okay so jackson asked imagine a situation where the person updated the resume after applying for a job now at the interview you are taking a much improved andy-tastic resume would this be an issue absolutely not what i would do uh jackson it's not a problem i if you were going to an interview and you've made a new resume it is okay for all of you don't don't be bashful 
what I would do is I would email a copy to the human resources person or the recruiter and I would just say I've as part of my job search I've been updating my resume trying to, to just to make it more effective tell a better story about myself I've got an updated one here it is and send it to her or him and then they will hopefully distribute that to the interviewers and then what I would do is I would bring the new one in and I would give that one out and I would say hey actually I've got an updated resume here it is that's all that's cool and then hopefully they'll go off that one all right that's awesome and I am looking forward to having you in the resume program Olga Olga is here how are you I do already know you are from Europe so you have a work visa for just one year what would be a convenient answer for question how I see myself in three to five years please share your thoughts on this okay so uh, I'm gonna give you a couple of different different thoughts here number one and here again only for the people who watch all my stuff which is basically nobody but I know a lot of you follow a lot of stuff that I, I I put out there whether I write it or shoot it or podcast it or video it I cannot stand uh, these three to five year into the future questions because you don't you don't know where you're gonna be in three to five years so I think it's an unfair question I know why employers ask it but it's a terrible question it doesn't tell them nearly uh, it doesn't tell them anything about you really I mean it, you might have a vision for yourself but you also might see something tomorrow that raises your level of passion for something and you might want you might change your mind but but I understand we we have to answer these ridiculous questions so if I'm asked this is in general if anybody is asked the three to five year question what you should do if you've done your homework is you want to talk about the advancements that that job description likely will yield in the next three to five years so assuming you're following that career path upward it's the safest answer because they might they're looking for somebody who wants to grow in that particular role within their organization because they want to know you're going to stay for three years or five years that's not a terribly long time it's 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 a reasonable time for you to be an employee at a particular organization so they want they want they want to know that your interests are in alignment with what they're hiring for that is 90 percent of the time 90 percent of the time and you could you could add some additional skills and other things related to it but generally speaking figure out what a growth path or estimate what a growth path looks like and then what you want to do is you want to try to fill it in and say I see myself as up this up the same slope now for you uh, with the work visa issue I don't know what type of visa you have there are different ones that require sponsorship some do some don't some uh, the individual will pay for some the company will pay for so if you have a work visa that you're looking for sponsorship that's a different issue and something you should be upfront about when uh, when you when you let them know so so that's a whole separate issue that's a visa issue I'm not as well versed in all the different visa types like the h1b's and all those others but they're they can be expensive to go from a visa to a green card to to citizenship so some organizations are willing to to accommodate that Melanie I'm guessing she's wishing Mike Sario hey how are you buddy all right Isis Gloria Juicy Garner Shay Jose all right Gigi's here good luck Diane Mike Michael are you seeing all this love man if you're gonna nail that thing tomorrow okay Kimberly in a panel interviews the phone in a in a panel interviews the phone how do you convey agreement with panelists responses to your question for all when they take turns okay Kimberly I think uh, I think what you meant is you have a phone interview and there's a panel of interviewers so you're doing some type of conference call with more than one person so uh, so what I what I tend to do is I use okay so first off this is just a side opinion that I'm gonna give you I think it's terrible that you do a group interview over the phone uh, I don't mind doing a group interview where you're sitting with a few people and somebody's on a video conference 
or somebody's on the phone, speakerphone, but when all of them are on the speakerphone, that is very, very difficult for you. So first thing is give yourself a, a little break. I hate those. I, I, I don't recommend that any of my clients do them. Uh, I don't have a problem with group interviews where you're all there in person or at least you can see each other because then you can maintain con eye contact. What I tend to do when I am trying to let them know that something resonates with me is I'm overt about it. I try to paraphrase what they're saying and say, I agree, I agree with that, that's great. And I would paraphrase, but you need to be specific and you're likely only responding to one, you can only respond to one of them at a time, uh, which, is, which is really why I feel that's unfortunate. I don't know that I'm giving you a great answer, but I think it's a, I think it's a really bad form on the employer's part. But I tend to be overt. I try to do what I call the intent check. I have a, an article that I wrote a long time ago about raising your communication intelligence. And your communication intelligence is your ability to exchange insight and information with the other party where you both walk away with a mutual understanding. Because if you don't walk away with a mutual understanding, you technically miscommunicated. So in your case, you want to be very clear that you understood them and you agree and it resonated with you. And one of the best ways to do that is this, there's, it, there's an intent check. And, it, and the intent check basically says, this is what I heard from you in different words, not their same words, because you need to use different words because that helps them to know whether or not you understood it. And then say, I, I agree with that. I'm very much in favor of that. Or I see that slightly differently. I, while I agree with you, I would add. Or something like that. That is letting them know it's resonating with you. That is letting them know you heard them correctly and understood it. So check that out, by the way. Uh, it's an article on my blog. Uh, if you just go into the uh, Tips for Working Life blog and type communication intelligence, it'll give you the tactics. Radisa, Aline, Aline Barrett, how do I respond to a question about experience that I don't have? Great question, fantastic question, and here's your answer. For any of you that ever get asked about a question, or sorry, get asked a question about experience that you don't have, product you haven't worked with, technology you haven't used, something you've never done before, the first line of defense is you always, 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 you speak about what you are and not what you're not. So you, you're welcome to say, I have yet to work with that whatever, or I've yet to gain that experience. One sentence admission. That's it, don't go on, one sentence, that's all you get, period, stop. That's the first thing. I have yet to work with that whatever. I have yet to experience that, I have yet to do that, whatever it is, that's it, stop, end of that. Then you move into what you are. You wanna talk about what you have done that's related to that. So, I have yet to work with that technology, boom, stop, but, I have worked with these other analogous things or other analogous processes or other analogous experiences. That's what I have done. And I know that there are parallels between this and this. And they help me gain these capabilities that would help me come up to speed quickly on this thing that I have yet to do. That's the second part of the answer. The third part of the answer is and in my experience, as with anybody who's going through their professional life, I encounter things I've never done before. So when I encounter that, here's what I do. Here's how I educate myself. Here are the steps that I will take to get up to speed. So what you've said is, eh, you know what? Yeah, I haven't worked with that yet, but I've worked with something similar. And here's my formula for getting up to speed really quickly. So you don't need to worry about when I get faced with that. And at the, I mean, at, the, at, the end, at the end of the day, you can say to them, well, what do you do when, you, when you're faced with something you've never done before? Everybody experiences that. So if you have a formula in your, a three-part response that tells them, okay, I haven't, fine, it, you admitted it, you were honest, I have yet to do that. Don't say I don't have that experience. I have yet to do that.
Don't use the word no. Second thing is, but I've done this, that's analogous. If it's from volunteer work, school, I don't know, I don't know how old you are. If, if you're coming out of school and you only have school projects, part-time projects, maybe you're a savvy vet and you have experience that you can draw from, but you want to make sure that you're matching it. And this is something, candidly, Aline, that you can prepare for before you go into the job interview because you know what the job description entails and you likely know what they're going to ask you, where your experience is, that how it aligns to that. So where you have those gaps, you can blueprint this response. And as a matter of fact, if you download the Ace Your Job Interview ebook, it's item number 10. How do you educate yourself? I'm giving you the script and it is, I've yet to do it. This is what I have. It's analogous. And here's how I train myself and get up to speed so you don't have to worry about. And the recency is a big deal. So the last thing that you say is what they generally remember. So you ended on a high note. You ended on two high notes. That's what I would do. Hope you like that. Ooh. Gloria, is there a particular time of the year that companies set up interviews? So Gloria, generally speaking, generally speaking, companies do a lot of hiring in the beginning of the year, in the first quarter, January, February, March. They also, they, companies hire throughout the entire year. That's first and foremost. But a lot, you see spikes in the early part of the year because there's new projects, new budgets, new inspirations. You see people who are also leaving to go to new jobs. So there's this, there's this um, domino effect. You know, I'm leaving one company that's creating a vacancy or I'm building a new project. I got a new budget. I need new people for that. Then what happens is there's still usually good hiring in the second quarter and that kind of tapers down a little bit in the summer and through into the fall and then in October when October rolls around you have very little hiring because a lot of companies are setting up their budgets for the following year then by no, the time November comes around or whenever it is you know later in the later you know toward the holidays then all of a sudden they need to start recruiting again because they need all those people for January so that's generally speaking however good companies hire all year round and all companies are victim to some level of turnover so there's going to be people that are vacating positions so they're open but generally speaking there is a pattern to it which i just gave you hope that helps isis hi andy what is the difference between tell me about yourself and walking me through your resume well that's a that's a very good question and it, uh, it's a really good question when they leave you to your own devices to tell you about yourself, tell them about yourself, they're giving you the freedom to talk about whatever you want. If they act, so you can talk about anything, which is, and by the way, I would, I would highly recommend you watch my Tips for Work and Life video on Tell Me About Yourself, the best way to respond. It's on my YouTube channel or in my blog as well as the first live office hours that we did where I talked about, tell me about yourself, and I give you the script of how to handle that. And But if they say, walk me through your resume, then just start from the beginning and then walk them through and then let them know what was happening and what you were doing. And basically they're saying, I want you to literally walk me through your background. So one in one question, there's no structure and you need to create structure. In the other question where they say, walk me through your resume, they're giving you the steps they want you to go through or basically the list or the contents that they want you to discuss. So that's that's really the difference. That's all. Gloria, in some countries, the summertime is the slowest season. Gloria, that's right. In a lot of countries, the summertime is the slowest season because a lot of people are on vacations and they've hired you know a lot in the first two you know quarters. So, all right, Thomas Seymour. Ooh, sorry. Thomas, hope you're doing well. Any advice for job seekers with disabilities and also those over 50 uh, plus? Yes. And I would love to point you to my video on eight, how to overcome age discrimination in a job interview. So I would, uh, I would check that out. It's a, it's a hit. It's a great video uh, that highlights what the biases are and what I would do to overcome those biases. So it's not really the disability or the age that's the bias, believe it or not. It is the stigmas and the associations that people make with what goes along with somebody who's 50 or older. 
They think your techniques are outdated. They think you don't want to learn anything. They think those kind of things. So without me going into all of how I would respond, if you check out that video, you'll have you'll have my answers of how to overcome them and what you're dealing with. So I hope that helps. All right, sorry, oh, I have an interview for a few executive meetings. Okay, so I've got a, you hit, you hit me with a double whammy, that's cool. All right, so Sario Millard, I have an interview for a few executive management positions in another country. How many interviews and types of interviews can I expect? That's a great question. Let's take that one first. So like a lot, and for a lot of you, when whenever you're giving me your, your questions, give me as much context as you can. So a different country could be across the border, it could be across the ocean, or it could be around the other side of the globe. So if you are interviewing in another country, there's obviously logistical issues, although in today's world, it's very easy to do these video things. And so you can, ha I would expect probably either some phone interviews or some Skype or video or Google Hangouts interviews or whatever. If you are an executive, it depends on the size of the company and how large it is. I don't know what your industry or the size of the companies are. We, MileWalk, my executive search firm, we deal with executive level folks. Some of these interviews take months, uh, take three months, depending on the number of people that they have to get lined up and the schedules of the ex other executives that they need to meet with. But here's what I would say that's probably standard. The best setup for any company who's interviewing a, an executive is you start out with a very senior person, preferably whoever your boss will be. That should be in the front. Or it could be some recruiting and HR folks, but basically you want to get who your boss is going to be. You don't want to waste a lot of time. Executive level folks are super busy. They don't want to waste your time. They don't want to waste their time, but they want to make sure that you are worth having a, a, an entire process with. Then what usually happens is you might meet some of the other executives second or third. You might meet some of your colleagues or some of your other superiors. And along the way, you might also, I'm high uh, I'm highly in favor of you meeting any subordinates that you might be managing. So you want to understand what your team looks like and who's there and give them a sense of who you are. And then circling back with you know, human resources people as well as the executives, again, additional time with your boss or the senior level folks in the organization. How, how long a period of time they take to do that is highly dependent on the organization type it is, how big it is, how difficult the schedules are. So it's very difficult to tell you. It's going to take a week, a month, three months, and so on. And if you're out of the country, they're certainly going to want to package up these, uh, these time frames if you have to go and visit them. But my guess is you're going to have a number of these first uh, live interactions via video and then, and then a trip or two. And it also depends on where that country is. So I hope, I hope that helps. And it really, it really depends. The other question you ask is why do you want this job? So one, that one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point you to the live office hours that I did. I think it was my second one. If you just go to my YouTube page, you'll see it literally says, why do you want to work here? And just go and look at that script. All right. By the way, folks, I'll say this again at the end. If you like what we're doing, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Every Tuesday, these things come out, actually at least every Tuesday. Plus I have live streams, other things. And, and share this share this with folks. Let them know you're enjoying this. This, this, this is this has been a great hit for a lot of people and I love doing this live but I, I'm getting a lot of folks that are watching this after the fact and if I don't get to any of your questions if I don't get to your particular question you can always ask me in the comment section because I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna post this later tonight so just I hope I hope you, you stay with me there Elizabeth Elizabeth Chesney all right in an interview is it okay to say something like if you find that someone else is the best fit for the position, can I be considered for another position or apply for other positions? 
So what I would say is, okay, so the general answer is yes. Okay, the general answer is yes, but I wouldn't package it that way. What I would say in an interview, and by the way, I would only say this to the hiring authority or the human resources official or the recruitment official. I would not say this to people who are interviewing you who do not have the final say or heavily contribute to the final say of hiring you. So, but HR, HR and recruitment folks, the exception, because you want to make sure that they are aware of your thoughts. What I would say is I really enjoy this time we're spending and I love your company. The most important thing for me would be to work here in some capacity. So if you don't feel I'm an, you know, an ideal fit for this role or it doesn't work out, I would love to be considered for any other role you think I would be a great fit for because it's more important for me to join a winning team and something like that. So I wouldn't bring the other people into it. I would just kind of stay away from that. Michael's thanking everybody. That's awesome. Aline, you're welcome. Michelle, oops. Sorry, I got, okay. Michelle, is it acceptable? Michelle Middleton. I'm on, yeah, wait, I think I got that right. Okay. Is it acceptable to correlate what I have done at home in my lab to specific requirements for the job I am interviewing for? For example, dynamic routing configurations, yes. So you are a technologist, networking fo uh, person, and you are building a sandbox in your house. Uh, that is awesome, and I would talk about it, and I would advertise it in the interviews, heck yes. Karen, hey Karen, how are you? Not every company's fiscal year is aligned with the calendar as well, so some companies hire quite a bit. That is totally, totally true. So Karen points out, when you're looking at, at, um, at, at uh, this goes back to, oh, I can't remember whose, name, whose question it was, but about are there, maybe it was Gloria, you know, are there particular uh, months or quarters where the hiring is more so than the others? Generally, so that generic answer, but Karen, thanks for that clarification. Uh, is usually in the beginning of the fiscal year. So that that is that is important. So you might want to find that out. Uh, you might want to find that out. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. Let's see. Carol, it's me again. I have two interviews so far, not had one for a long time. How should I have dealt with, number one, being told that I was old. Oh, my goodness. Um, and two, interviews high-fiving each other during my presentation. Okay, so we get this a lot. I, I work with a lot of people of a variety of ages and we hear these things. Uh, the first thing I would say not to be flip is there's no way I'd wanna work for that company. If that is the behavior of the people that they are willing to put in front of you during a time that should be the most respectful, cordial, fun, interactive, if that's the way they behave, I wouldn't want to work there. That's what you're getting yourself into. And it should be, they should be on their best behavior in the recruitment process, if you ask me. Um, I can't believe that they told you you were old. That's terrible. Uh, but I would, I would save myself, Carol, a lot of grief and chalk it up to that I wouldn't want to work there and I would try to erase them from my memory. I honestly, I, I, uh, I can't believe that. But that's that's what I would do. That's that's actually my best suggestion. It really is. All right. Thank you so much, Gloria. Oops, sorry. Try to get in here. Sorry. Oh, I think. Hang on, folks. I'm just trying to make sure I'm in the right spot. Thanks so much, Gloria. How long do you suggest waiting before checking with HR or the hiring manager about your resume received? So. Generally speaking, folks, rule of thumb, whether it's resume submission, a job interview that you had, and all that good stuff, when you talk about wait time, seven calendar days is magical. That's kind of the rule of thumb. So here's what I here's what I suggest. If you, Gloria, you submit your resume, not everybody is going to respond that they received it. That's okay. It's not personal. Sometimes they get hundreds a day. Sometimes they get thousands a day. Sometimes the recruiters are not working on everything every day. You know, so it's, it depends. 
I wait seven days. I send them a message and I say, I just wanted to follow up. I submitted my resume a week ago. I wanted to know if you had a chance to look at it and if you have any thoughts. That's my first check-in. That's your second entry point. You submitted your resume, whether you emailed it or put it in the applicant tracking system, and now you sent them an email seven days later. Then you wait two weeks, two more weeks. If they have not gotten back to you in two weeks, then I would send them a similar message because now you're talking about three weeks. And then if they don't respond, I let it go. That's it. Three, three, three strikes. And same with, with an interview, if you interview with somebody, you, you, and by the way, you should be sending them a thank you email, and I prefer a card too, within 24 hours. If they say, we're going to get back to you tomorrow, or in three days, or in seven days, or in 10 days, you should wait the period that they say. But if they say, we're going to get back to you tomorrow, don't email them the next day or the day after and say, well, how come you didn't get back to me? A million things could have come up. I would give them a few extra days. If they say three days, you might want to wait five days before you respond to them. If they say seven days, you might want to wait 10 days to check back in if you haven't heard from them. But if they say we're going to get back to you tomorrow or the next day at the latest and you haven't heard from them by the fifth or sixth day, then I would email them and I would ask, what's what? Okay. All right, Shay, I love the live interaction as well. Michelle, you are always welcome. Carol, thank you. Enjoy your day off. I'm, I'm oh, enjoy your day. All right, I'm never off, just so you know. All right, uh, good for you. Go for it, Michael. Jackson, best of luck. Jackson, don't forget to email me. Support at mile walk. Okay, wait, Kara, am I, am I down to the bottom? Can you let me know? Is that it? Folks, I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you are grabbing the stuff. We're coming up on, I think we're just about wrapped on time too. Kara, did I get everybody? Can you just let me know that? So folks, do me a favor. Check out the description. There's tons of goodies there. Take them all. You're welcome to them. I hope you enjoy. If you like this, give me a like, a comment, and a share. It's really, really helpful. Oh wait, I see, I see. Okay, I'll take another couple. I'll take, I'll take one more. Gigi, uh, how would you handle if the hiring manager says you are too expensive? Folks, this is a good one because I know a lot of you wrestle with this. There's a couple of ways. Now here again, when I talked before about context, if you are, if you are. Um, really interested in the role and you're a little too expensive, you have a couple of options. What you could do is you could say, I really want this job or I really want to work with this company. Is there anything that you can do to add to the job or job description or role that would warrant paying me what I currently earn or what I want to earn? So first thing is you want to stay financially where you are or get or go up and the first line of defense is you got to ask them. They might say no, that's, that's fine, but ask them. If you really want the job and are willing to take a pay cut to do it, maybe you're making a change or maybe you really want to get in that company or whatever, then you need to share that. Say, you know, I, I know I currently earn whatever, $100,000 a year, but I would certainly be comfortable earning less if it, it gave me the opportunity to work here. This, this by the way, these are for your, per, this this depends on your personal situation. You might not be able to take that pay cut, but that's how I would respond it. What could we do to the job itself to warrant paying me what I earn so that the, so I'm contributing that level of value or you can go the other way. I'm open to a reduced pay from what I currently earn because I really want to get in here. But that's, that's for you. That's for you to decide, Gigi. All right, Suzanne, you're welcome. Carrie, first time live. Finally, I'm reinventing myself for a human resources position. Love it. Enjoying the knowledge. You are welcome. Gloria, great. You are welcome. Always. Leo, hey, Andrew, I heard that 4th of July and August isn't the best time to apply because employers, employees are going on vacation. Is it better to wait or risk having my resume getting lost? Leo, that is a fantastic question. Folks, remember this. I know you want to increase your odds of getting hired, but this is about you. It's not about me. It's not about them. 
It is about if you are ready and you are looking, put it in. Trust me, while we have these stigmas about, or, or sorry, we've got these, um, uh, uh, what am I thinking? Uh, stereotypes about you know when we're doing certain things, just like I gave you that answer, hey, they generally hire in the beginning of the year and July and August is slow, or whatever. It's not 100% and you don't know that. So don't, don't, don't try to guess. Your resume is ready, you wanna roll out there, you send it. You don't hear back from somebody, you give them a little extra time because it's a holiday, they could be on vacation, but you poke in, maybe you wait two weeks. This is about you, it's not about them, it's not about me, it's about you, okay. And it won't get lost and, it, and you can always shove it back in their inbox. All right, folks, I love doing these things. So check me out on the blog, if you're on my subscription list, which you all should be, Tuesday's video, new video day on my YouTube channel and I'm on the Tips for Working Life blog. Give me a like, a comment, and a share if you love this and make sure to grab the goodies and sign up for the free webinars and all that good stuff. And until the fall, live wise, have a great one.